Hello everybody, welcome to Photo Beast. Today I wanted to talk about a company called Newer, or Newer, however you want to pronounce it. For the purposes of this particular video, I'm going to use the name Newer. Now, over the years, I have used third-party companies. I've tried third-party batteries, never had much luck with those. I've tried third-party flashes, they're okay. And I've tried third-party this and that, and some of it shit, shit, shit. Now, when it comes to Newer as a company, when I bought their gimbal head, I was really excited. It looks sturdy. The carbon fiber matches my carbon fiber tripod. And I said, you know, this is going to get the job done. The first time I took it out in the field, I started having issues with this thing not locking. And when you put your 500 millimeter lens on here and you carry it on your shoulder, you need it to lock in place because if it starts swinging around, it can potentially drop your gear and you don't want to drop a $10,000 lens or a $4,000 camera on the ground. And I'm shooting a 500 F4 and a Canon R5 with two batteries in it and with this and that. It, it just, things get expensive and we don't want our gear to break. And the reason why we're buying this stuff to begin with is to save money, not to waste money on repairs. Well, prior to me getting the RF 100 to 500, I was shooting the EF 100 to 400, right? The EF, not the RF version. Now the EF version needed, of course, an adapter. I had already purchased one Canon adapter and that's the one that I use exclusively with my heaviest lens and I'm gonna explain the reason why in a moment. But in the meantime, a few years back when I first got into photography, I bought some Godox strobes. These things have a plug on the back. I built a home studio here. It is now a YouTube studio, but at the time it was my home studio. I had backdrops, had carpet down. It looked amazing and these things kicked ass, got the job done every time. These are the SK400 Mark II or version two. They still have the Mark IIs out, but the difference now is they don't have the modeling light that's big like this. It's obviously a grower, not a shower. No, I'm just playing. But having a light bulb right here, it's intrusive, it gets in the way. If you touch it with your finger oils, it's not good. If the light bulb blows out, it's gonna cost you money. The new ones of these are a lot sleeker because they use a small LED light built into the system itself, which makes it greater. Does it save any weight or anything? Not really, but it's a sleeker design and the LED works better for modeling because they also don't get hot and they use less electricity and you don't have to replace them. The problem was I needed to do outdoor stuff. So that's when I started looking into newer and I bought this Vision 5 TTL flash. This thing's great. It also has HSS, which is high speed sync. If you've never used a flash, that's kind of important to have if you're shooting in bright light because you want to have a higher shutter speed to make your backgrounds darker. It just works out. These things are tough as nails. They're sturdy. They can get banged around. The material does scuff up, so they don't stay pretty long, but it's a tool, you know? It also gets kind of like the stickiness to it, which I'm not thrilled about. Well, that's a sticky one. Sticky. But it was cheap, brand new. This was like $350. I bought two of them brand new at the very beginning. And some of my first photo shoots, I remember one of them always crapping out. And what happens is you get an E4 reading on the back. It was either E2 or E4, but that reading on the back means you can't use it. And you have to take the battery off and put the battery back on and take the battery off and put the battery back on and reset everything on it. And it's a true pain in the ass and you don't want to look unprofessional, especially when you're working for people for the first time. And because one of them kept acting up, I bought three more on a great deal off Facebook Marketplace. A guy sold me three of them for like 600 bucks, which knocked them down to $200 a piece. He gave me three triggers and he gave me five extra batteries. So at the moment, I got five of these. These, for the most part, do a decent job. It's just one or two of them here and there act a little wacky and it always happens at the worst time. So that was one problem that I had with newer. The other problem is with these things. This is the trigger that came with the newer strobes. The trigger itself isn't bad, but it's, it's flat. So when it's on your camera, it's facing this way. So every time you need to change the setting, you got to flip your camera up and down to be able to look at it. It kind of sucks. When you look at the Godox one, it's at an angle. 
which is nice so you don't have to turn your camera all the way up. You know, it's just those little subtle details that it makes you wonder sometimes who's in your R&D or your development department. Oh, it's alive, it's alive, it's alive. Have they ever even done photography? You know, it's just get somebody that knows the trade to figure these things out for you because they'll make better products. And, and it's those little things that, you know, we look for in a product besides reliability and consistency. But the original trigger, it's never failed me, even though it's facing flat, which I don't like. Don't despair. Mm -hmm. So the strobes are iffy. This thing is garbage. You're gonna ask, why would you buy anything else? Why? 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 Well, I needed a multitude of EF to RF adapters, right? The original ones are not cheap. These are about $100 at the moment. There was one point in time where they were about $150, and that's just the plain, there's nothing to it. Well, I wanted the ND filter one, but Canon wanted $399 for it. Well, Mikey came out with one, and it's actually on the camera, the RP that I'm filming with right now, and theirs was $149. And it came with two, one clean glass, clear glass, and one ND filter to put into it. I love that, and it was a great deal. It works, and they put an ample amount of screws in it. We're gonna talk about that in a sec. So let's take a minute and just look at this, okay? You see one, two, three, four. On the back side, we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, okay? Seven screws. This is the Canon one. They put seven on the back and four on the front. Do you know why? No. Why? The four on the front, if this was to get loose, your lens is not gonna fall off because the lens, if it falls this way, it's not gonna pull from the front because you're still adapted. You see what I mean? So if I'm adapted on here, it's locked, right? It's not gonna pull from this way. If this pops off, however, this part will stay in the camera, which is an impossible pain in the ass to get out. And all this, will rip open, the guts will come out, and your lens will fall. This ring was on my Canon R5 with the Canon EF100-400. The, e the EF100-400 actually weighs about the same as the RF100-400, even though there's a slight size difference. It's also a little bit bigger than the 70-200. to Now, this control ring actually snapped, and when it snapped, I had my camera and lens come apart. My camera and lens both fell and slammed on the wood floor inside of the house. They fell about three feet, bounced off the floor. Nothing broke except for this $100 um, EF to RF adapter. And it has, like I said, the control ring on it, which is the reason I liked it. It gave me a fourth wheel. I got in touch with Newer. Newer sent me a second control ring. That would be this one. Unfortunately, right here, is the release tab. The release tab, when you carry these bigger lenses around and you have your strap on, your strap will be strapped to the lens. So the lens is definitely connected to you. So when you're walking and you're doing wildlife or bird photography, like I said, the strap is connected to the lens, but the camera and the mount with that little uh, button loose. All right, so it was at this point in the video, I heard my mom screaming for dear life in the background over and over. So I went to go see what it was, taking a break from trying to explain that the button on the side of the adapter will hit the side of you, thus making your lens or camera fall, depending on which one was attached to you. In the meantime, there was a baby cardinal that we found over here, and it was just scared to death. So we petted it for a minute, as you can see, it flew off. It popped off my damn card reader door. So now I've got another boo-boo and another problem with my R5. I want to show you the size difference. Check this out. So here's one out of the Canon. See the size of this screw? It's so big. All right, I'm gonna put this to the side for a second. Now we're gonna take one out of the newer. The newer one, look at the size of that. I'm gonna put these in the palm of my hand next to each other. This, my guys, is just ridiculous. Come on, come on, come on. A few moments later. There. 
So look at the size difference in these things. Do you see this little tiny small one right here is from the newer. This big one right here is from the Canon. Canon not only gives you one that's triple the size, Canon gives you seven of these when newer only gives you four of these. And that is just a shame. So you get about half the amount of screws and they're about half the size. I bought a third one. Is right here only to do videos in the house with small lenses like 35, 50, 50 millimeter, 85 millimeter primes, which are very small, very light lenses, or to do something like the 24 to 70. I would never, ever, ever put a Sigma 150 to 600, an EF 100 to 400, any lens of that stature, let alone something like... The Beast 500 millimeter F4 and then the 600 millimeter F4 is bigger than this. So in theory, if I was to put this lens on this newer adapter, what would happen is those little tiny screws would bust out of the back. My lens would be secure, but whatever camera I had, whether it's a $2,000 R6 Mark II or a $4,000 R5, it would smack the ground and thus potentially break my camera permanently or do $1,000 to $2,000 worth of damage. Either way, it's not a good scenario to save $50 or even $100. It's not worth it. So the point of this video is not to bash newer. Okay, sure! They're a company that sells us stuff at a cheaper price. Five dollars is all my mom allows me to spend. But that cheaper price comes at a cost, and the cost in this case is the screws that they use. Hey, I know that now! Okay. These little, little, tiny screws. Luckily, this is the Canon one, so you can see it. So big. Well, with that said, friends and family, thank you for joining me today on my little rant. It was just more of a warning video as to just be careful when you use third-party companies. For instance, my gimbal loses stuff. It doesn't work that well, and it's never once held a lens in place without just being soft and rolling. The strobes that I bought, the lights sometimes work, sometimes I get an error. And then last but not least, these little EF to RF adapters that are supposed to give me a little control ring are not worth it. They just weren't worth it at all. They ended up costing me a lot of damage to my R5, which is going to really hurt me with the resale value because my goal was to sell my R5 and put that money towards the R5 Mark II. What is it that you've bought in the last year or two that just doesn't work? or that you were really excited about and it kind of failed you. Just let me know so we can all kind of stay in tune on what's good and what's not good. As well as I just wanted to introduce, we are starting a Facebook page. It's a group for all of us here at Photo Beast because this is not just my channel. I hate YouTubers say, welcome to my channel. This isn't my channel, this is your channel as much as it's mine. This is our channel because we're a fan and we all need to communicate with each other. We need to share our artwork, we need to share our settings, and we need to share a thought and that's where I want to hear from you guys not only in the comment sections here but in our Facebook group it's going to be called photo beasts and then as well as that I also have a book coming out in the next week or two so be looking out for that I love you guys and I hope that you'll join us for the next video take care until then and God bless yeah.